Tonight on Connecticut's news station flooding for the 4th of July. The rain unfortunately put a damper on some daytime festivities. We'll have the forecast for tonight's fireworks shows. But the rain didn't wash away one Independence Day tradition. We're there as boom boxes line the streets of Willimantic in celebration. A lot of my holiday decorations when I take things out, I, I think of the Christmas tree store. Plus, a popular store will close its doors for good soon. And tonight, we meet shoppers who are celebrating their last Christmas in July. Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening and thanks for joining us for the News at 6. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. A rainy 4th of July all across the state. Dark, cloudy skies roll in here. The rain was really coming down in the capital city this afternoon, putting a damper on a lot of holiday plans. And check this video out. Uh, viewer sent us this from Weathersfield. You can see the roads overflowing from the rainwater there. Hmm. But will it be dry for fireworks Goodness. later tonight? Well, Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank is joining us now with the answer. Rachel, how about it? Yes, I think we are going to dry out for fireworks displays tonight, although it is going to be incredibly muddy out there, so definitely bring something dry to sit on. There is still a flash flood warning in effect for Fairfield and also for New Haven counties with a lot of rainfall over a short period of time. We saw that in various locations across the state today. But luckily, it looks like the rain is moving on out. So other than a few leftover sprinkles here along the immediate shoreline, they may be able to drop this flash flood warning here soon. You can still see again a leftover shower or sprinkle and a couple light light showers rather from Mystic through Stonington. As we widen out the picture, you'll see there's nothing back behind that. So I think as we move through the remainder of the evening, we could even see a bit of clearing as we head towards sunset. So fireworks displays tonight. Temperatures will be in the mid 70s. It is going to be quite humid, low 70s for some of our cooler spots. And then our attention shifts from showers and storms, relentless showers and storms over to heat and humidity. You're already feeling the humidity outside today, but the heat will join the party. We're up around 90 degrees as we head through the day tomorrow. We'll do that again heading into Thursday and Friday, so a potential heat wave on our hands. We'll take a look at your full forecast coming up. Rachel, thank you. And as we continue tracking the rain, be sure to download the Fox 61 News app. There you will find the latest forecast in your area. All right, a building fire shuts down a major road in downtown Hartford as firefighters try to extinguish the flames. Yeah, the fire broke out at the Frontier Building on Trumbull Street. Fox 61's Jake Garcia is live in downtown Hartford with the very latest. Jake. Well, Brent and Sarah, that fire is now out, and the smoke that once filled downtown is gone as firefighters begin to wrap up here on Trumbull Street. Now, take a look at this video. Here's what it looked like when we first arrived on the scene earlier today. Smoke could be seen coming from the base of the building where firefighters were concerting a lot of effort to get that fire out. Now, I did speak to a man who called 911 who uh, made the call. He lives in the Spectra Park building uh, just across the street, and he said that he made it just before uh, the call, just before 3 p.m., and uh, first, he thought it was just fog from the recent rain, but looked down and saw flames coming out of the base of the building. Now, just moments ago, we spoke to the deputy fire chief who said that they got the call just around 2.51 and they got here about five minutes later. They did have a, a difficult time responding uh, because they were scattered throughout the city due to uh, low resources because of water rescues and so forth. They do believe that fire did come from a storage room, but they are continuing to investigate. The building was unoccupied at the time and the building's structural integrity remains intact. But for right now, out here live again, Trumbull Street from Jewel to Pearl remains closed, but should open in the next 30 minutes or so. We're live in downtown Hartford. Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, thank you, Jake. Well, people at this Rocky Hill condo complex spent their holiday cleaning up after a flash flood sent water rushing into their homes. Look at this video. The fire department says several units had damage and at least four units are unlivable. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin got an inside look at some of that damage. These Rocky Hill homeowners tell me that this spot right here had turned into a river last night and it all started whenever the water came, they say, from a construction site just beyond this tree line and then flooded 11 different homes. Typically on a summer holiday, the Cedar Hollow condo complex would be full of people grilling or at the community pool, but not this year. And my son calls and said, Dad, you've got to get over here. Your whole, the whole basement's full of water. Homeowners say the water rushed in from the neighboring construction site, creating more than just a few puddles. 
I had probably two feet. Some people say they were lucky because their homes saw no damage at all, although others are left with a visual reminder of what happened. We found at least 11 units with a substantial amount of water in the basements, uh, ranging anywhere from several inches to, to eight feet. Now today will be spent pumping out basements, cleaning up the property, and throwing away ruined belongings. But that is just the beginning. We're supposed to be sending out people to uh, sop up the water. They're going to have to uh, do for uh, molded mildew because the water's getting into the sheetrock right now. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's our 4th of July. <laughs> and the worst part of it all, well, residents say this drill has become a familiar routine. Because the first time it happened, it ruined all the carpets. It was going to happen again, it happened again five times. Many telling me five times is enough, and they're praying that is where the tally stops. And those homeowners say it's unfortunate that their homes were flooded and they had to spend their 4th of July holiday cleaning up that damage. But they say thankfully, and what's most important, is that nobody was hurt. In Rocky Hill, Brook Griffin, Fox 6. Connecticut's news station. Red, white, and blue, and a boom box. <laughs> and depending on your age, you might be asking, what is a boom box? <laughs> well, it's not quite a relic, but Fox 61 Samaya Hernandez is here to explain. It's still the glue that keeps a 38 year Independence Day tradition alive in Willimantic. Samaya. Sarah and Brent back in 1986. Willimantic was the first town to have that boombox parade. Now it's the last to keep that beloved tradition going. When lining Main Street for a 38 year tradition, reasons vary. Summer, the people. Heard about it and I uh, thought I'd check it out. This is your first time. Yeah. I've been coming as long as I can remember and I'm pushing 80. Eight. Eight. Mother Nature held downpours until after the 38th annual Boombox Parade, a Willimantic tradition dating back to the mid 80s when there was no high school band to march in the July 4th parade. And there started the Boombox with the WILI radio, AM, FM. The concept is simple. Bring a boombox dialed to local WILI radio for curated parade music. Mayor Tom DeVivo's boombox has seen all 38 parades, despite taking hard to find C batteries. The concept the community continues to embrace, even after music streaming apps stole the boombox's thunder. Pandora and Spotify, and it's just slowly changing. I hope we can find radios forever. No boom box in 2023, no problem, even when four generations are involved. Started walking in the parade, and then as the generations grew, we um, just started sitting. <laughs> Without a boom box. Usually we have one, we forgot it this year. Mayor DeVivo tells me that the parade is not going anywhere, but he does admit that they might have to let go of the boom box at some point in the near future. I'm Samaya Hernandez, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Samaya, thank you. It's a fun idea, really. All right, state police uh, continuing their increased enforcement on the roads today, and here are the latest numbers from last Thursday through this morning. Police have responded to more than 6,000 calls, those including more than 400 accidents, two of those accidents fatal. Another one resulted in serious injury. The number of accidents up from the, uh, uh, from the just under 300 accidents this time last year. There have also been 34 DUI arrests across the state. That's down from 50 last year. A new report highlights a troubling trend on America's roadways. The data is raising some concerns during the busy holiday travel weekend. That report shows pedestrian deaths across the U.S. are projected to be at a 41 year high, and the numbers are also up in Connecticut. Connecticut saw an 11 percent increase in pedestrian deaths from 2021 to 2022, and preliminary data shows there were 62 deaths last year. There are a lot of contributing factors uh, we've seen with our fatalities, uh, whether it's distracted driving, uh, uh, <clears throat> reckless driving to include speeding, uh, whether it's alcohol or cannabis induced. Lawmakers recently passed the Road Safety Vision Zero bill this past session. It includes measures like education campaigns around drugged driving and more. 
Well, two people are injured tonight after a car went over a bridge in Bristol earlier today. Police say a car was driving on Andrews Street just before 10 a.m. when it went over the bridge's railing. Two adults in the car were conscious and alert when crews arrived on the scene. They were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries and no other cars were involved in that crash. And in Hartford, uh, crews responded to a car that crashed into a pillar in a church driveway. Uh, this happening outside the St. Lawrence O'Toole Church on New Britain Avenue. The car rolled on its side, but police say the driver was able to get out on their own and uh, no injuries were reported. Hartford police make an arrest in a deadly shooting that happened on Prospect Avenue yesterday morning. Police say Jordan Green faces a slew of charges, including murder. He's accused of shooting Gregory Betsy multiple times behind a building on Prospect Avenue. Betsy died at the hospital. Green is being held on two and a half million dollars bond.